Hey guys, welcome to Realism Overhaul. We are finally in 131, doing some sounding rockets with our with our beginning parts here. Doing a few few small contracts, just starting to get get the ropes for every all the changes in uh, in 131. Uh, you notice this first one, this first small sounding rocket, Spyro One, doesn't even have an Aruby, um, and that's because when I installed um, 131, what I initially did was I went into a sandbox save and used, I think it's called Janitor's Closet Mod, I pruned a ton of parts and I accidentally pruned the Aerobee. So initially in the beginning, I didn't even have it, so I, um, I realized that was a problem because that should have been there. So I went back and unpruned everything, so I'm pretty much just going to be pruning things with the Janitor's Closet. As, as I unlock them in the tech tree, so like fuel tanks and stuff like that. But anyways, these Spyro missions, Spyro standing for sounding per initial rocketry observations, is just basically trying to send a tiny rocket to space. Um, I was pretty much just experimenting with different fin designs and different... Well, it's not, not so much experimenting, but what I was doing was putting payloads toward contracts like 30 payload here, 60 payload here at a certain altitude and was getting a little bit of money so I've definitely made a little bit more money than I've wasted building all of these tiny uh, tiny little sounding rockets. Uh, but pretty much they only consist of a fuel, t uh, fuel tank, some fins and an aerobe, these parachutes, and the telemetry unit and it really only runs you a little bit less than a thousand dollars for each one of these so it's a very cheap rocket and the thousands upon thousands of dollars that you get from contracts from the beginning seemed very worth reiterating uh, I believe 10 of these well Spyro 6 is a little bit different design as we'll get into later for a lot of these designs as you saw there were coming into difficulties high in the altitude um, after the Airbnb shuts off and it's just drifting and spinning into the upper atmosphere what happened a lot of the time is instead of rotating it would start yawing and it would just spin around like a disc instead of like a tube and this has happened with Spyro 2, 3, and 4 it, actually no and 5 and 5 here, yeah, it's happening right here. There's at a certain point where it just starts doing that. Um, and this is something I actually corrected in Spiro 6. And I think it may be because it's spinning too much. Something in the Kerbal Space Program physics is... It's making it do that when it spins too much. See, uh, no, this is the same. This is the same fin design. Maybe a little bit different, but uh, I believe this was just fulfilling a contract. I can actually go through all the different details for the launches. I actually have a Google Doc that is public and anyone can view it of all, all of our launches and the status of them and what the directive is. I'll have that linked in the description below, but Spiro 1, I believe it only reached about 2,000 meters. Uh, Spiro 2 reached an altitude of 28,349 meters. Spiro 3, 133,820 meters. And that that would be a record that held until Spiro 6 was actually successful. Um, I I've lost track of how many launches have gone up so far, uh, so I'll just, I'll just keep reading them through the list here. Spiro 3 was launched again, this time with uh, 28 units of sounding payload. It reached an altitude of 124,252, also a pretty successful launch. Uh, Spiro 3 was launched for a third time with a little bit more payload, and actually reached a higher altitude of 128,193 meters. So Spiro 3 has been very successful. The launch right here was the first launch of Spiro 4, which had a critical failure. Spiro 4, um, I decided to experiment with a very, very slim sort of corkscrew uh you can see right there the the fins it was only three instead of four um and you see here it did eventually stabilize right here but you had to get up to speed first 
This one uh, reached an altitude of only 90,508 meters because of all the spins that's happening because, uh, like this. It just doesn't have enough aerodynamic um, structure. Um, stability is the word I was looking for. Aerodynamic stability. And this, you see here, it just started flying off like a disc. Uh, this actually had 62.2 units of spin load. Alright, here is uh, Spyro 5. It actually had two solid rocket boosters on the bottom there, instead of just the usual one that Spyro has until this point. This also has 62.2 units of payload, but this spin, this spin really, really cut our altitude down. Uh, it only went up to 108,000 meters, roughly. Luckily, the um, sounding units, sounding rocket payload, contract I had only required a hundred thousand meters so just barely above it but that's not what I was going for I was trying to get into space with that one over 140,000 meters was what, I, was what I was trying to do at least and here we have um, the Spiro 6 being constructed I'm just redesigning the Spiro 5 here completely well I I, I put this in because the other ones, there isn't really anything special to the construction of this one. But this one, this one is a very unique design compared to the others. We got a two-stage Araby rocket where we got four Arabies on the first stage and then one on the second stage instead of a solid rocket just launching us up. I wanted to make the whole thing this sort of, this sort of old-timey stainless steel type look and I tried to make that happen with the fins here, which it, it turned out all right. Um, just wanted to have that rotate ever so slightly and you notice I don't have fins on the on the second stage and that becomes a huge problem and a bigger problem is how much of an angle this is at right now and well I'll let you see for yourself why that was a problem <laughs> So that's what happened. Not only did it pitch over below horizontal, um, the, f the second stage didn't even fire. But even if it did, that would have not been stable. So what I did was I had switched the orientation to straight up, added some fins to the second stage, made doubly sure that the second stage actually ignited. And this Spyro 6 was the most stable of the spiral launches so far. It never, never decided to start disc spinning instead of rotating like it is right now. And this reached an altitude of 324,290 meters. So it's officially in space. It's officially way in space, scientifically speaking. Uh, this didn't fulfill any contracts though because the time was up before it launched, but it definitely can fulfill some contracts if any want me to go 140 kilometers or higher up to 324 like I said this can definitely get some payloads up there for a little bit more money um, I forgot how much it costs but it, it was it was in the past right there so this was the Spyro missions there may be some more continuing but I think we're gonna be developing a rocket towards uh, having an orbital satellite so Spyro 1 kicked us off in 1.3.1. There's much more to come. I want to thank you so much for watching, and peace out.